is giving the speech from the advanced Toastmasters speaking to inform manual the abstract concept. He has given two of these speeches already in the two manuals that he has, which means that he needs more manuals, <laughs> especially because he has many more speeches planned for the audience and let the audience be known that you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I'm not sure if the speech is five to seven or six to eight minutes because I'm kind of winging it. If I scratch one of my knees, then it'll be six to eight, otherwise it's five to seven. <laughs> the title of the speech is After Alexander. I repeat, After Alexander. Alexander the Great is one of the most enigmatic figures in history. He was the greatest general that, have, that has ever existed. Some of the Toastmasters and honored guests might remember that I gave a previous speech about that. But there is something else equally interesting about him. His dream. He dreamt, like many people afterwards, but he had a better opportunity than them to create a world state. His goal was to conquer the entire world, unite it under his leadership, and merge all of the world's cultures. However, he had an untimely death at the tender age of 33. His contemporaries and later historians have often debated how sincere his dream was and whether or not his dream was feasible. But you have to wonder about that great what might have been. You see, Alexander the Great was a meteor. He lit up the night sky, and then he went away. Nobody forgot about what he did and what might have been. After he died, people wondered who would succeed him. The Macedonian army chose his half-brother, Eridaeus. Alexander's first wife, Roxana, was pregnant. She would later, later give birth to a son, who would become Alexander IV. However, the, Alexander IV and Eridaeus were both assassinated 13 years later. Any possibility of keeping the empire united died with those two assassinations. There followed the so-called Diadochi, or War of the Successors, as Alexander's generals fought to control his empire. Either one might take the whole thing, which was highly unlikely, even though Antigonus the one-eyed seemed like the most likely candidate. Two generations later, that it would have been proven impossible for anybody to do that. The empire was divided into three major kingdoms and several smaller kingdoms. These kingdoms developed a new culture. They moved on since the death of Alexander. They formed the Hellenistic era. They developed their own culture, which one historian has described as being Greece on steroids, with its size, its pomp, its grandeur, its wealth. They developed new intellectual traditions. They developed new political challenges, and these kingdoms fought with each other constantly. However, a new superpower rose from the West. That superpower was called Rome. Rome gobbled up one of these Hellenistic kingdoms after another, and then finally in the year 31 BC, or BCE, depending on which dating system you'd prefer to use, Cleopatra VII, who was the last queen of the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt, committed suicide. The Hellenistic era officially came to an end as the Roman Empire began. The culture of the Hellenistic era prevailed. It did have a profound influence on the Roman Empire and beyond, even to this day. The Romans remembered Alexander, that meteor of the past, and that what might, what might have been. But let's talk about someone else. Someone who is much more important than Alexander to me. That someone is Kim. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that Moore woman who's a member of this club. <laughs> a different Kim. A Kim with yellow hair. Yes, this is the very same yellow hair 
that she used to put in front of her face while she made cousin it noises for my amusement. Yes, this is this very same yellow-haired Kim that once asked me if I'd be willing to change a baby's diaper when the time was right. <laughs> and yes, this was the very same yellow-haired Kim that once drove me down the I-5 in San Diego while listening to Cheeseburgers in Paradise by Jimmy Buffett. I remember thinking, life doesn't get any better than this, even though that song does glorify non-kosher food. <laughs> Maybe I was right. Maybe life doesn't get any better than that. I'm not sure. Ask me on my deathbed. But Kim was a meteor. Meteors light up the sky, then they're gone. I don't remember why she is gone. I know it isn't my fault, and I'm glad of that because if it was my fault, then I could never forgive myself. I know it wasn't her fault, and I'm very glad of that because if that was the case, then I could never forgive her. You see, I forget nothing, and I forgive even less. <laughs> but, like the world after Alexander the Great died, time marches on. I improved my resume so I could pack my bags and move to Tampa and pursue my occupation of choice. I joined a crazy organization called Toastmasters International. I read many history books, not only so I could excel at my profession of choice, but also for my personal knowledge and interest. I also watched 7,343 professional wrestling matches, <laughs> not that I'm counting. <laughs> and finally, I have flown across the pond five times, soon to be six. You see, I moved on, I developed a new world, and at some point, like the Romans, I will develop new interests, new challenges, and new desires. And then I will pursue them as well. You see, that's the way life is. You see the meteor, you don't forget it. But you move on because life has a brand new adventure waiting just for you. <laughs>